we can't really start or talk about anything else first this morning except the absolutely wonderful victory, um, Katie Taylor in Madison Square Garden last night. I don't suppose we could actually overestimate the importance of, of this moment for women's sport and sport in general, really, Ushing. An absolutely phenomenal performance uh, by someone who is a phenomenon. Katie Taylor, how she survived those middle rounds, I don't know. She dug deep. She, in her own words, went into the trenches and somehow came out of it. Towards the end of the fight, I thought if she stays standing, if she gets to the end, that in itself is a victory. And even if she loses the fight, there's still so much to be admired about Katie Taylor and what she has done. Because McCaskill, who she'd fought before, said in the days leading in, she can't handle power. And even though she's never lost a prof professional fight, the one thing she did look occasionally like she struggled with was fighters with power. But she proved everyone wrong. She handled it. She got through it. And she found a way to win. And it's just typical Katie Taylor to do something unexpected, to dig deep inside and to do what needed to be done. And I don't think there are enough superlatives in the English language to cover what Katie Taylor is and what she's done. Now, Anne Marie, I suppose when we look at Serrano's record, I'm not sure you, you know, alluded to there, with the power, she's a powerful punch, she's a record amount of knockouts, she's been uh, a winner and, and it's, she's gone, gone up all the, 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 the weights and, and championed every single one of them. But Katie really, all commentators were saying, the longer the fight lasted, the more of a chance Katie would have to win. But the middle rounds were absolutely cruel to watch, the fifth particularly. But in the, in the last couple, she really uh, took it out of the bag. Yeah, and when you talk about Serrano, like this was the first time in Katie Taylor's career that she went into a fight um, not as the favourite, as the underdog. And there was a serious amount of pressure on her in terms of that, but also in terms of the gravity of the fight, the first time that a female fight was headlining Madison Square Garden. But she just came out in those opening rounds making an absolute statement. You know, it was kind of, how dare you um, question me? And she absolutely dominated those opening rounds. And then when she did um, kind of falter in the middle rounds and Serrano took over, it did look like, I think in the fifth round, it almost looked like it was gone, yeah. yeah. And then she she just dug in and it was how dare you question me all over again like she just comes every single time with answers and she's just phenomenal like there's just like as Oshin says there aren't really words to describe what she has done and like as we say she's undisputed now and hopefully we will get that rematch in Dublin as she rightly deserves but yeah, yeah just amazing like and, the career that she's on had. that note the rematch is on the table between Taylor and Amanda Serrano at all places Croke Park take a look Absolutely. Um, we we all want to see the best yeah. versus the best. Of it. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, a rematch would be absolutely phenomenal. And if it was in Dublin, we could sell out Crow Park, I would say, 90,000 people. <laughs> um, so that would be unbelievable. We, we've seen something special here tonight. Might have been flying in front of 80 or 90,000 people in Crow Park. Um, ab absolutely, that, that can happen. It's no wonder there's such a big smile on Eddie's face anyway. He's after a million quid <laughs> after a man, Jake Paul, after the, the bet he put on that. We could actually, theoretically, fail Croke Park. And the fight I really want to see is not just Serrano versus Taylor 2. It's Jake Paul and Eddie Hearn against the Croke Park Residents Association. That's <laughs> going to be some fight. It has to happen in Croke Park. And I yeah. think with Katie... Tony Bellew was on the zone afterwards yesterday saying he hopes that she walks away. I think the one thing that might keep her involved, the one thing that might keep her going so is a fight in Crow Park. Now, yeah. I say that, but Katie might say, no, I'll fight for another 10 years and yeah. she well could. But it would, it, doesn't she deserve that homecoming in Crow Park, which would also be a great fight. And in fairness to Amanda Serrano, yeah. she said, if there's to be a rematch, it makes sense to go to Dublin. So yeah. she's up for it. But what, what I loved about the build-up to this as well, I mean, I'm, I'm so sick of the posturing in, in male boxing and the, 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 the trash talk and all that sort of stuff. These two fighters, they didn't need to do that. Yeah, they knew their own worth. They just went on. We got on. Well, we respect each other. We're going to give you a good show. And they did. It's probably one of the best boxing matches I've seen in a long time, just purely for skill. Yeah, it was a classy build-up. Both fighters recognised um, how strong the other one was and the class that they were bringing into the ring. And yeah, they just did their talking in the ring, an absolutely incredible performance from both of them. But that's Katie's career as a whole. Like, she has done everything right. Like, we don't really hear much from her in between fights. You know, she has her head down, she trains in America. We don't hear any controversies. We don't hear um, trash talk from her. She just does everything right. And when you look back, I think in like 50, 60 years, when people look back on her career, it is kind of 
possibly the point in women's sport that I think people will look back on and it was a turning point and she has just become such a role model that's just insane for young girls and she's just done everything right like we can't fault her. From Hollywood in, in, in the US to Hollywood and County Down, people are tweeting about her. I mean, it's amazing the impact she's had on the sport, the great and the good Charlize Theron. Huge names are, have come out in support of Katie Taylor. And it is absolutely massive. She has done something transformational for sport, not just women's sport, but sport in general. Now I'm going to ask both of you before we move on. She is, would you agree, the, the best Irish sports person of all time at this point? Because the amount of belts she has, the Olympics, world champions, European champion. Doesn't she have another belt after last night as well? Didn't they create one specially? The Katie Taylor Award for being Katie Taylor. Yeah. yeah. I, look, she is one of the best athletes we've ever produced. And you think about what she's come through mm. to get to that level. When she started fighting, and this was said mm. in the international commentary last night, girls weren't allowed to fight. No. She had to go against the rules. Um, Anne Marie's off the ball colleague, Ronan Mullen, who was at the fight in Madison Square Garden, said it was one of the best fights he's ever seen. He doesn't hyperbole. So when he said it, I thought, OK, this is a pretty big praise. And he also called her one of the best athletes we've ever produced, if not the best. Uh, yeah, look, yeah. you have to look at what she's done and say, yeah. Yeah, I saw her described this morning as the most important Irish athlete of a generation, and I think yeah. that's accurate because what she has done, she has transcended women's sport, every single barrier that was put in front of her. She not only smashed them, she basically ignored them, you mm. know, and like young girls will look back on this career and think that they can do anything. So mm. I definitely think in terms of importance, she's up there at the very top of the top. And in terms of skill, yeah, she's up there in that top bracket anyways, yeah. yeah.